long ghost of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's not enough for me. I just going to get a little taste on Sunday morning. <laughs> I'm not going to get a taste. I want the river of the living water. Amen. Hey, there's an abundance of water. Apparently, the well is not dry. Love us and that we can't mess up the love. 
That love gives us confidence, like children, that we can play, that we can have fun as we learn, as we're filling up on you. Lord, would you save and heal and deliver our families and our work associates and the colleagues around us, God, that don't know you, God, would you draw them in? Because they say, what's different about you when things could be going wrong around you, but you've not lost your joy? What is it about you? Is there a drug I need to know about? Is there something that you're doing that your doctor prescribed? Maybe I need to do that. And then they could just respond this way. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost. It's not enough for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, the whole book, the whole Bible is, is a book of prophecy. Did you know that? All through the pages of the Bible, you can feed on the scripture and there's hope in it. And just to make sure you're, you're, you're understanding that there's a difference between the New and the Old Testament, the New and the Old Covenant. Because if you don't know that there's a new superior covenant, if you get stuck in the past, you'd be in the law. Uh, I love the Torah. I read the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. But I can't ever remember Jesus saying, Torah, Torah, Torah. <laughs> but Jesus actually came to fulfill every requirement, every jot and tittle of the law. He actually became your sin, past, present, and future. He conquered sickness, disease, death, hell, the grave, the, the weights of sin or death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus, the Son. The only way you can get this right is to rely on Jesus because his grace is sufficient. You cannot save yourself. Mohammed can't save you. Amen. Buddha cannot save you. Only Jesus can save you from eternal damnation. And if you've got Jesus, he's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the door into success. True success is not measured by the temporal. True success is measured by Jesus who is the Christ who came to die for the sins of the world, become your sin, sickness, disease. He became dead so that he could conquer it all, so he could give you the keys to your future. When we're in the New Testament, the new covenant, we see that it's a covenant of his blood. It's a covenant of his grace. Jesus is grace. The law was given through Moses. Grace came through Jesus. He fulfilled all the requirements of the law. There's no way you could have done it. So some of you just have to let yourself off the hook of what you've not done right or what you haven't yet accomplished and start believing that his grace really is sufficient. And it's that grace, it's Jesus in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory that will cause you to be compelled with the same type of compassion to pursue him because he loves you. Not to get something from him, we pursue him for who he is, not for what he can do, amen? So let's pray that God would really show us that today because it's so important as we're learning to move in the gift of prophecy that we get that part right because it's foundational to how you will prophesy, whether it be doom and gloom or judge the, right? It's, you don't judge the person, you judge the word. In the Old Testament, they would judge the person. If they got one word wrong, then they would stone the person. They were a bunch of stoners. And Jesus, in the New Testament, I was just checking to see if you're awake. Yeah, you're awake. Yeah, praise God, I heard a few of you giggle. Uh, in the New Testament, you judge the Word, not the person, the Word, to see if it be of God. Test the Spirit, see if, if that is the Lord's Spirit or not. And if it isn't the Lord's Spirit, we don't want it. We only want what is from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Children, you can be dismissed. Pastor Danielle is going to be teaching at Children's Church. And so, children, you're free to go and uh, have fun. Pastor Danielle is a lot of fun. We laugh together during the week. <laughs> she stays really busy. She's like, did you notice? I go, oh, yeah, that looks amazing. What would you do? She says, well, honey, I just cleaned the floor. I go, oh, yeah, I thought something looked different. She got a new dog, and the little dog's been leaving landmines, land you know? <laughs> so I said, honey, um, you know, I smell something. 
has happened in the house. And she's like, well, it's our dog. Well, when you bought it, you said it was your dog. And then I wasn't to touch your dog. Your dog is your dog. So and now it seems that we both have a dog. The dyslexic agnostic insomniac. <laughs> agnostic insomniac can't sleep. So they lay awake at night wondering if there really is a dog. <laughs> More people got it the second time. Okay, I'll say it another way. No, I'm just kidding. I've watched some serious pastors on TV and I've thought, man, I can't watch this because it's way too serious. There's no joy in it and a third of the kingdom is joy and I don't want to absorb what is not the kingdom. So just notice, if you're going to learn from someone, make sure they have a little bit of joy because if there's no joy, they probably got into legalism. Legalism is emphasizing your own self-effort and the, the law and your ability to keep it, which is the bedrock or the foundation of the birthing place of spiritual pride, which is probably the number one reason people don't go to church. So if you really want to shine for the world to know about the hope that lies within you, make sure you know that you're approved fully in advance by Jesus. When you come to him, you come as you are. You don't have to get all fixed up and become perfect and talk the language. You just come as you are. And he goes, oh, you're more than enough. I love you. I watch you. I smile over you. I delight in who you are. And I'm causing you to become who I've foreknown and predestined all along. Right? Amen? Do you receive it? Yes. Does anybody need healing? If you need healing, just raise your hand. God will heal you. Yeah, why wouldn't he want to heal you? Yeah, just release. Come on, everybody pray this prayer because a whole bunch of people will be healed right now. Also, if you're watching it online, type in where you're watching from. Share the post. And then if you need healing, type it in. We'll pray for you as well. You guys ready? We're going to pray. Everyone in here is a prayer person. You are an intercessor. Everybody's an intercessor. If you're a praying person, if you believe you're an intercessor, you'll start praying. If you don't believe you're an intercessor, you'll, you'll wait for the intercessors to do the praying. And it'd be better if we all just prayed without ceasing like the scripture says. It didn't say intercessors do it. It says it's, it's for the Christian. It's for the follower of Christ. So let's just do this. Ready? Just, just start praying. For those of you that, that wanted healing, just raise up your hands right now. Well, there's a bunch of heal, healing that's already taking place right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we bind and rebuke every spirit of infirmity. And we cancel the effects in Jesus' name. And we say, get out in Jesus' name. Spirit of infirmity, I command you to loose them and go in Jesus' name. Right now, backs are being healed. Necks are being healed. Knees are being restored. Feet are getting on fire. An internal uh, organ is being released. Uh, there was a blockage. God says, I'm removing the blockage. I'm removing the hindrance. I'm going to cause all things to be made new. Because it's who I am, says the Lord. Behold, I make all things new. Hallelujah. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We release divine help. Yet you say this, say, I command every, every person's body to be healed. Right now, in the name of Jesus, this is a healing center. The awakening is now. The awakening is here. The awakening is in you. The awakener is the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, <laughs> we just need the living water. You just drink a little bit more of the Holy Ghost. And if you say more, God, more, more healing. Yeah, yeah, more, God, flow in me. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. Lord, I say, have your way. Do what you can do, God. Do it now. In the name of Jesus. Every curse is broken through the blood of Jesus. Yeah, come on, somebody. Say, I forgive myself. He's given you. Say, I forgive every person who hurt me. Yeah, I bless those who I, who I once despised. That is a blessing. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to be mad at people. I'm not going to let a bitter root rise up. No, I'm going to just say yes to God. I'm going to flow with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to move with the passion and the fire and the boldness of knowing I'm a son, or if you're a daughter, of the Most High God in Jesus' name. Oh, right now there's something changing. The Lord's touching bodies in Jesus' name. Somebody got a stomach thing. I see fire in your belly. Hallelujah. Oh, I release it. Pesha, God, Rabba, Saul. Yeah, yeah. So if you, if you uh, are feeling a change, a decrease in pain, uh, an increase in mobility, I want you to do me a favor just wait a minute. 
You feel a change in your body. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Keep waving. Keep waving. Keep waving. Put it all the way up. <laughs> You're getting more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> That's twelve. That's amazing. Oh, Jesus. I want you to know that the testimony of Jesus is as the spirit of prophecy. Every raised hand represents. This is what he's doing, and this is what he will do again. Somebody else in Jesus' name right now. I release the fire of heaven to burn up the chaff, what opposed you, what came against you. In the realm of the spirit is like a springboard to set you in motion into your eternal destiny. You're going to walk in such power. He's giving you increased capacity, increased authority, increased anointing, increased oh, sensitivity to the presence and the power of the Lord. <laughs> oh, he's good. Isn't he good? Yeah? Come on. It, it, who actually just got healed and you know? Come on, raise your hand. Uh, did you feel something change? Yeah, did you feel what happened in your body? Your neck? What happened? I've been, I've had a, an issue with it, a C3 for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, um, they just called it out as arthritis. I never received that, but I've been dealing with pain and been in physical therapy for a long time. Uh, two years? And what can you do now? I, I have no pain. <laughs> she got healed in her neck. How long did you have the problem? She had this problem in her neck for two years, and Jesus has just healed her. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. How good is that? What happened? L4, L4, did you get healed? Oh my goodness. He was he was healed, he said, two weeks ago when, when I had it. Did I pray for you? Was it up here? Okay, so he got healed of what? L4? Oh, he said lower back, L4. He just got healed right here two weeks ago. His back has been healed. I don't know if you realize, your chiropractor is practicing. Jesus is perfect, amen? I know your chiropractor wants you to think he's perfect, but Jesus is perfect and he makes all things new here's two people that god's bringing back whatever the enemy stole and he's healing backs it's prophetic that god's healing backs because remember in, in matthew i think it was 11 and if you read on into 12 it's like you know he heals he he he, he said take my yoke upon you learn of me my yoke is easy and my burden is light what, what does a light burden look like you know yoke is what they put on oxen and they would actually they would Fashion the wood carver would fashion the yoke to fit the oxen. There was always a big one, strong one, a big bull, and then a little one, a younger one. And they'd carve out the, the the yoke to fit right on the shoulders of the of the oxen. And what happens is, what happens is, some people say, "Well, I'm tough. I'm strong. God told me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put my my neck in that." bulky, weighty side because after all, I'm capable of doing it on my own. So I, I can see that some people have been putting their neck in the wrong side of the yoke. See, on the side where the big adult male bull was to carry the, the majority of the weight, it was a bigger, heavier piece of wood and it would taper down on the side for the younger one to not have so much weight. And I feel like the Lord's saying, will you trust me? to carry the bulk of your weight because my yoke is easy and my burden is light and then you will find rest for your soul. But don't let spiritual pride tell you to take on more than what you're called to do. Instead, get your neck out of the wrong side, the heavy, the weighty, and come into the lightness of his likeness and say, God, I thank you. You're carrying the majority of the weight in my life. You're carrying the bulk of the weight. Hallelujah. Yeah, he can do, he can do amazing things. Ooh, there's so much goodness in, in the word. And who's been studying the scripture? Let me see your hands. You've been studying the scripture. Good for you. You know, I like to come to church full. I used to come to church to fill up. And the Lord started to say, no, prepare before you get there. Prepare into the courts with thanksgiving and with joy by praising him and thanking him and lifting up his name. Praying in tongues and praying all kinds of prayers. And as you pray, the Spirit of God increases. The prayer room should be full. Every, every time we do pre-service prayer, if there's like four or five people show up, I just want to say some of you are missing out on the opportunity to just come into the fullness of God's anointing. You know, it never has to fade. 
you can feed your spirit. You can feed your spirit. What happens if you feed your spirit? Your spirit, coupled with the Holy Spirit, causes you to almost sense the, the likeness of Him, the likeness of Him. When you walk, you, you're almost like, oh, I'm mindful that the dove has landed. Oh, the dove has landed. So you're walking in such a way where you're conscious that you carry the dove. just want to give you a touch, but he wants to land and stay. <laughs> Prophets and prophetic people. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna quiz you. I didn't tell you there'd be a quiz, but here's a quiz. The nice thing is it's optional, you don't have to answer, but I want to include you because this will help everybody else. Who can prophesy? Anyone. What? Anyone. Everyone. Wow, that was really good. You guys were in one accord. Yeah, okay. Does prophecy okay, here's a question. What happens if somebody gives a word that is not 100% accurate? Are they false? Or did they just get the word wrong? Yeah, why? Because the only way to develop in a gift from God is to actually practice operating in that gift. So the enemy's job is to try to stop you from doing the very thing you're called to do and Paul said, I wish you all would prophesy because he knew it was an important thing to exhort, build up, lift up, and even bring reproof in the body of Christ to encourage the people of God. And so prophecy is a big deal. And I believe you all not only can, but if you're willing to look silly at times, like I have shared some of my mistakes in learning how to prophesy more accurately. Uh, you know, I've shared some of the, the mistakes that I've made. You remember the story I told, I think it was last week, where I had prophesied that God told me he's bringing a shaking. And there was a family that took that so seriously that they got under the table of their house that night and waited for the shaking to occur. But see, I missed a piece. It was the interpretation of what that shaking would be. So always remember there's a difference between the revelation and the interpretation. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you interpret correctly, and He will. And just stay in tune. Stay. It, has anybody prophesied recently for the first time? Raise your hand if you prophesied recently for the first time. Well done. Can we give them a hand, by the way? Let's give them a hand. It takes courage. It takes courage to prophesy. Here, watch this now. I need a volunteer that wants to receive a prophetic word. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't have to come up here. Go down there and just, just stand there in front of her. Yeah, right, right in the middle. Stand over here. Right there. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, come on. Tell everybody your whole name. Uh, my whole name is Gail Porter. Okay, Gail. Look at me. Gail, I, I feel like the Lord's saying he made you really, really smart. And because you have been given uh, the gift for understanding and, and that you desire wisdom above all else that you learn from, from, from a heart that wants to be, you know, approved of God, but you know you're approved, but I feel like God's saying that because he's proven it, you'll never have to prove anything because it's proven. You don't have to prove what's proven. And now he's saying all the education in the world would not change your value. You could not be more valuable than you are right now. And the Lord wants you to know this. It's really important because all the pressure is off you. You're just amazing. God knows it because he made you in his image and likeness so that you'd be a shiny one. One of the things heaven loves about you, you're shiny. <laughs> you're shining in the Shekinah, the Shekinah, the Shekinah. You know what I mean? And the child likeness and the faith that you carry is a precious gift to the body of Christ. And the Lord wants to honor you publicly. This is why of the people who raised their hands, which was many, uh, the Lord wanted and highlighted you. He wants to validate that you could not be more loved. You could not be more blessed. You could not be it more perfectly positioned to see the fulfillment of what caused you to labor in education for so many years. And the Lord's saying, watch what I do, because I'm about to take you into a whole new realm of my glory. I'm going to release you to change the nations. You know And the Lord says, release all the cares, all the stresses, all the pressures, all the unfinished business. <laughs> and just give it to me, says the Lord. So just say, I give it to you, God. Because you look as easy as 
burden is light. You'll find rest for your souls. And you're going to write a lot of things. The most brilliant thing you could write is the thing that God speaks to you. Because the lesson is going to become the teaching. And the Lord says, I've called you to global missions. And you're going to bring impact wherever you go. There's villages that don't even know my truth or who I am. And I will send you and you will be funded by heaven. Ho! Oh! And the college campuses will receive you in your return because the stories of my goodness will emerge from the beauty of your heart. Oh! <laughs> oh! Praise the Lord. Yes, I just bless you. I pray for open doors. Yeah. I pray for those college campuses and those relationships with professors in the universities that they start calling your name. That they say, wow, you know, can you come and just bring a piece or an excerpt for this? And that you're able to go, God, is that what you want? He's like, yep, yeah, I'm the one who set it up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I was in the prayer room before service, and he said, today I want you to demonstrate. Because we can talk about it, and it's information. We can read the scripture, and it's super beneficial. But at the end of the day, if there's no demonstration, it's the missing piece or the ingredient that needs to be implemented into the body of Christ in this hour. Demonstration is what's going to show you where God is actually hanging out. Everywhere Jesus went, he was demonstrating. He wasn't just informing people. Amen. I mean, I don't want to just say things because it makes me sound good. I don't want to say things because it's what God's ordained. And if it's not his meeting, if he can't move in the meeting, then we're kind of wasting time. So we have to let him move. Amen? All right. So is there anybody who's been struggling with feeling a little discouraged right now? Raise your hand. I want to encourage you. Uh, you? Oh, my goodness. Okay, anybody who's been feeling discouraged, I just want you to be bold and just stand to your feet. God's going to encourage you. I'm going to give a word for the discouraged. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I hear the Lord saying, discouragement is meant to remove courage. But yet the Lord says, I have called you to be strong and courageous, and you were not made to do this alone. Some of your discouragement, some of the anxiety, even the tendency to, to be depressed or stressed, is coming out of you feeling almost as though you don't matter or you're insignificant. And the Lord says, you could not be more significant to me. Yeah, amen. You could not be. Yeah, you, oh, you could not be more beautiful to me. You could not be more precious to me. And I hear the Lord saying, you will never be alone. Emmanuel is God with us. He's saying, you can never be alone. So when the enemy tells you you're all alone, or you're by yourself, or no one cares, you must turn that into worship and begin to declare the truth of my word, says God. <laughs> and you can sing. And you can sing. Make a joyful noise. Sing to the, sing to the Lord. Make a new song. Yes. That's an instruction. Yes. And instantly, you will become aware of the beauty of his presence and the power of his increase, he's going to add unto you, according to the desire of your heart, that he himself put there to reward. And the Lord's saying, wisdom will find a reason to praise. Wisdom, he says, wisdom will find a reason to celebrate. Wisdom looks for evidence to support faith. Oh, I know I've never said that before. <laughs> Wisdom, this is what's so fun about the Holy Ghost. And you just don't know what's going to happen until it happens. And you're like, whoa. Oh. The Lord says, I will withhold no good thing from you who diligently seek me. You seek me and you find me when you seek me with your whole heart. I can see that your heart is a precious commodity that cannot be lost, cannot be wasted. But everything that you do unto me is celebrated by my angel armies. Heaven watches you run the ball for Team Jesus. The great cloud of witnesses that's surrounding you even now to prepare this third great awakening. God says, I'm ready to move, are you? 
Are you ready to get in the river and flow like you've never flown before? Are you, are you ready to, to, to move into a position of absolute surrender? Where when the wind blows, you ask me the question, what would you have me to do? Oh, and the Lord says you were not forgotten. And you will not, you will not entertain those thoughts from the enemy that lies to you and says, oh, look at you. You don't have what that person has, or you're not where that person is, or the husband's gone, or the wife has left. Uh, all these things are good things that work out together for my purpose. As all things work together for the good, according to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That's the scripture I'm hearing the Spirit say. And God saying, just get ready, because the waiting has actually caused the renewal of your strength so that your wings that have been prepared in adversity will, will mount up so that when I see your praise is fully on, I'll put wind under you to take you into a high place of my glory. And from that high place of glory, says the Lord, I will satisfy the deepest longing of your heart that I put there myself to reward, and you will not be denied. No. Joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy when you're in sync with the Holy Spirit. 
so you know what happens? Sometimes we've got to go through enough fire to burn up the chaff of religiosity, of the, the he says and the she says and what went wrong. And like, you, sometimes you've got to get enough fire on you where none of that even matters because you're so in awe of the king. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He does love me. Yeah. I, was in a, I was sent to a church and, and God sends me to this place and I'm sitting there and minding my business. And God said, go up front and sit up front. And I was like, well, that, I don't know if that's okay, you know. Is that how many people do that? Like, God says, do this. And we're like, well, I don't know if I should do that. <laughs> He's like, go on up front. Go sit up front. So I go and I sit where he shows me to sit. And I often do this. And I, I see how God actually tests the leadership to see how they react to what I'm doing in following the Spirit. I can tell if they're in sync with the Holy Spirit. And he clearly tells me to do something. And then they jump in there and say, you can't do that. Then I know I've just bumped into a religious spirit, which is the Antichrist spirit that wants to stop the flow of the Holy Spirit. But don't think you're going to get it right all the time. Because <laughs> then you get in there with religious pride. The Savior of the Lord. I cannot go to the bathroom until 2.31. The Savior of the Lord. And then it gets weird. And it's no wonder these communities shut down the prophetic and kick out the prophet. Oh. Into some sacred cows, my goodness. <laughs> you do the will of God, you're going to find them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she seems so sweet until I did what God said. <laughs> 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 For a guy in the coffee shop, he got a brand new uh, uh, miracle. His whatever his leg was, there was neuropathy, leg, feet. Anyway, he couldn't run. Well, after I prayed for him in the coffee shop, and honestly, I felt a little weird because the Lord said, "Go to your knee and release my healing." And I said, "Hey, brother, God told me to pray for you. He wants to heal you so you can do what you couldn't do before. Is it okay if I pray for your your leg and your and your feet?" So I just went down like this. In Jesus' name, I command this to be healed. In Jesus' name, and I bless his feet. Well, I found out uh, because I went to this large church, and, and God, you know, showed me uh, that I was supposed to go to this large church. So it's a different place, and I, I go there, and I'm following the Spirit, and I know I'm in, in, in the grace of God, sent to be there, and I knew it was the will of God, but also sense the spiritual tension because if you're in the glory, if you're in the presence, there's going to be power. And you might not notice that the power is there. It's kind of like you might not notice when you sit in your car that there's gas in your tank. But when you need the gas, it will be there. But the gas is only if you put your foot on the pedal, but you first got to start the car. Yeah. People are like, oh, there's no, there's no gas in here. Well, no, you've got to turn on the engine. <laughs> Obedience is like the engine. The gas pedal is not necessary unless the engine is on. Oh, the Spirit of God wants to teach us something. I'm getting blessed right now. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for that. <laughs> Remember the old turbochargers? You kick the gas pedal down and there was a delay. It's like, I don't feel nothing. I was like, Ooh. It's like, nowadays it's like, Ooh. but it's, now it's like, oh. So Jesus is like, here, do this. And we're like, I don't feel nothing. I'm not feeling it. I heard it, but I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Feelings are fickle. You can't trust feelings. Just do what God says. Okay, well, what's God say? Oh, he wants to do this. Well, oh, man, I'm dull of hearing. Why am I dull of hearing? Oh, because I didn't really want to do it. Oh, I wasn't trusting it. Oh, okay. Lord, I trust you. Thank you, God, that you're going to leave me because I'm your child. And you said your sheep hear your voice. And I guess I'm your sheep, so. <laughs> and you start moving. Soon. Ooh, it was like, whoa, the Holy Ghost. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost. Think about it. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God lands on the act of obedience. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. Anyway, so I went to that, that, that church that God sent me, the big church. There's another one I, I know I'm bouncing a little bit, but the other one God 
God sent me to stop a church split. So I had to call out a, an individual, but the Lord instructed me clearly, do not mention his name, just describe his behavior. And the leaders will know. So I go up to one of the elders, the one who got highlighted, and told me, tell this guy that there is a person who's doing this, this, and this, and if it's not addressed, it will lead to a terrible, hurtful church split for this large gathering place. And they said, will you come and tell that to our our elders. I'm like, sure, you know. And so next thing you know, I'm being ushered into a private room and all the elders come in and I get to give them the word of the Lord says, this person's doing this, 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 and this. And if you don't remove him, it will be very damaging. But do it in honor and do it in love. Yeah. It was about three weeks, four weeks later, God sent me back to that place and they publicly brought him up on stage and thanked him for his wonderful service. And he was removed from the church and he took hundreds of people with him. But if it wasn't handled correctly as the Lord gave instruction, it would have led to a terrible, painful split. But that church recovered and built back up and it became influential in the nations of the world. Now, why would God send you or me to any place to give a word of the Lord? Because he speaks through his people today. And some people are like, well, I'm not a prophet. That's not really my assignment. But just look at yourself as a, as a, uh, a Christian, a follower of Christ. And, and don't be afraid to say, hey, I'm not sure. I just felt like God told me I'm supposed to come here. And I'd like to submit this. And then you can, you can judge it yourself. Judge the word. And if it's God, then it's going to bear fruit. And the fruit came. And that, that church was saved. And another church uh, was emerged out of that that fizzled and died because the person was operating from a Jezebel spirit as a man. Mm. And wow. I realized that it was that spirit that had connected or attached itself to that leader and it was literally sucking that leader's life wow. because that's the nature of that spirit. And so I went to this other church and where God had sent me and a man comes running up to me exuberant and he's like, Nathan, he's so good. Ah! It's good to see you. He goes, you know, when he prayed for me at the coffee shop, he goes, I got healed. I don't have neuropathy anymore. He says, I can run. I said, could you not run before? He says, no, for years I could not run. And so he's telling everybody, like, hey, you got to meet this guy. And this is Nathan. He's the one who prayed for me, and I got healed, and I can run now. And a woman comes over to me and says, uh, oh, you're Nathan. He, oh, yeah, he pastors another church. And, and uh, he's just so awesome. We just love Nathan. And, and, then, and then this lady says, oh, uh, what church do you pastor? <laughs> <laughs> it just looked like she sucked on a pack of lemons. <laughs> All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost just sucked out of the room. I, mean, I still had the Holy Ghost, but... Oh, what church do you pastor? <laughs> Answer that. She was not of the right spirit. So then I thought, oh, okay, this is interesting. And she goes, so what are you doing here? Wow. And I was like, oh, that sounds like judgment too, from condemnation. Wow. Well, you know what? It's fun to be the will of God. But I thought, you know, it's probably time for me to go. Before more people say, well, where are you from? Why are you here? I don't know. Why are you here? Oh, I get it. You came to block the movement of the Holy Spirit. Well, you're doing a great job. Praise the Lord. I will pray for you. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I didn't. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, I'm awesome. Let her go. Get up. <laughs> Some people need to be delivered, man. Oh, that was a need that day, but it wasn't appropriate, the timing. You gotta get the timing right. You gotta get the timing. It had to be the right timing. Amen? I don't know where she's at now, but hopefully she's not blocking the flow anymore. Somebody probably got sent there. Maybe a prophet of the Lord and praise God. God will use you on a special covert operation to help restore the body of Christ, but it has to be according to the will of God. Yeah. And we have to honor leaders that God put in place. He puts leaders in place for a reason. And if they don't know you and you come in and say, I've got the word of the Lord, you better listen to me or hellfire will fall on your houses. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. You just, you know, you've got to be able to recognize, okay, that's not God. And I cancel that curse in Jesus' name. Right? 
Amen? If you don't have to be heard, then you won't speak and demand people to listen. No, nobody who has the word of the Lord should demand anyone to hear anything from them. Just say what God gives you to say in humility. And you have passed the test. And it's always a test. Amen. If you don't do it, then he'll send somebody else. Oftentimes, God will just prepare the other person to get blessed. And then you'll learn, oh, man, he was trying to prepare me to get blessed, and I didn't. You know, he told me to write a certain book with a certain title, and, and uh, I was dragging my feet because I was busy, and the Lord says, okay, well, if you're not going to write the book, I'll ask somebody else to write it. It's a really good topic, and it kind of motivated me, and of course, this book was born. Come on. Is there anybody here that wants to learn how to hear the Lord's voice better? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I think you in the red. Let me just Let me just read this. This is the moving of my spirit. The Lord gave me this on June 7th. It says this, my people who want to see my spirit move first need to get out of my spirit's way. Don't you think it's interesting that I actually didn't know, I didn't know what this was going to say. But again, following the Holy Spirit, and it, it correlates, it goes right dovetailing into the theme that the Holy Spirit was on. I love this about God. I didn't know that was there. Let me read some more. <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> just one dose of the Holy Ghost. My people, we should just call this one dose of the Holy Ghost. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. You can quote me on that. Hallelujah. The moving of my spirit. Come on, I'm going to read this again. My people who want to see my spirit move first need to get out of my spirit's way. My spirit can only fill what is emptied of self. It's a good word. Those who are full of self cannot be filled. Wow. Oh, there's a direct word from the Lord. See, I didn't have to go, Thus saith the Lord, receive this word, or you will be. I didn't do any of that. It wasn't necessary. Like, I've seen weird stuff in the prophetic, and it's no wonder some people don't let the prophetic flow. Mm. Because it's dangerous. If you get people given words that aren't from God, and it's God stamping everything they say, mm. that's dangerous. So you have to have the fear of the Lord so that you can tap into His divine wisdom. And then you will not speak to be heard, you will have no selfish ambition, and you will just want to glorify God. That should motivate our hearts in every way, just to glorify Jesus. Like, why do I do what I do? I just want to glorify Jesus. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing to be able to do that. And then the Lord said, those who are full of self cannot be filled. And the filling, of, and the filling is not able to be grabbed by eager hands who wish to display themselves. Wow. The hands that are put to work to build my house, not a house for themselves, are the hands I will use. There he's talking about selfish ambition. He'll use your hands if your motive is to glorify him. That's why the Bible says, do everything as unto the Lord. Every word that you speak, every deed that you produce, everywhere that you go when God calls you to come, it, it can glorify him. If your heart is to obey, he will empower your ears to hear and you will flow in the prophetic like never before. You will flow. That was a blessing, by the way. You will flow in the prophetic like never before. Into the heart and the spirit of those who hear the word. And because God's no respecter of persons, but he doesn't want he can do for another, so don't get jealous and compare yourself or you will be miserable. Hey. If somebody's getting breakthroughs, say it out loud. I'm getting breakthrough because the body is getting blessed. I see breakthroughs happening. Yeah. That means breakthroughs going around. And it's the testimony of Jesus. It's what Jesus is saying. That person just got blessed. Hallelujah. I bless you even more. I pray God would increase you even more. I pray for more wisdom, more capacity, more power, more strength, more blessing to come upon you in Jesus' name. You bless what God is blessing. Amen. That's the key to tap in. You want some of that for you? Start blessing and honoring it in someone else. 
Yeah, the person you got jealous of was the, was the key to unlocking the increase. <laughs> The enemy trying to get you to compare, to try to convince you that you got the short end of the stick to create in you a victim mentality. But it was all a lie because you're a victor and not a victim. If your relationship went south, praise God. If you lost your job, praise the Lord. He's going to give you double for your trouble. You needed to get rid of that job anyway. It was keeping you complacent and bound to the dollar system, the, the sweat and toil, earth curse system sometimes has to be exposed. So we, we recognize where our help comes from. Yeah. In one moment, God could decide to cause all grace to abound towards you and your storehouses will be instantly full. Don't fear what they fear. Don't fear what the world fears that has no hope. Show them that your faith is in God, not the system that wants everybody to be dependent on itself. Yeah, go ahead, go to the weed store, numb yourself down. I know, some of you are doing that. But listen, you don't have to wake and bake. With God, you just wake up and talk to Jesus. Jesus, oh, glory to God, what do you want to do today? I'm not going to numb up and dumb down. I'm going to go, Jesus, I'm yours. What do you want me to do? Come sit with me, beloved. Come sit with me. But Lord, I'm busy. You're not too busy for the instruction, are you? Well, Lord, but I gotta go there. But Lord, I'm hungry. I gotta eat something. And after that, I'll get something to eat. <laughs> huh? Do we do these weird things? We want to medicate. The Lord's like, put down that pork fat boy. Listen to the word of the Lord. <laughs> I feel myself getting skinny. This is a good word. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, come on. Those who are full of self. You guys know people who are full of themselves? Hey. Yeah. They're not singing just one dose of the Holy Ghost. They're like, just one more of a selfie. I can look like hell the skill. Thank you, baby. Thank you, Mom. Uh, little sister, don't you? <laughs> All right, here we go. The hands. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm having fun in church. You know? It's, it, you know, some people think you shouldn't be able to do that. You guys remember the religious guy? He came to the service and he was really appalled that I was laughing in the holy place. So, so I got a phone call. I don't know which one of you gave him my number, but I rebuked you. <laughs> 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 he called me up. He's like, I just want to talk to you, Pastor. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, he's joyless. That's not a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Don't let miserable, defeated, depleted people tell you who you are. You gotta know who you are and who you are in Jesus. Okay? But I happen to know, so I wasn't too bothered. But I actually was entertained and it made me laugh what he said because he, he goes, I've got a real problem with that laughing spirit. And I said, what's that? He, there's nowhere in the Bible where it says that there's a laughing spirit. I go, really? Well, what Bible are you reading? Because uh, in, in my Bible, it, it says that in his presence is fullness of joy. Joy brings laughter. Laughter working like a medicine. And medicine's for healing. Just say medicine's good. Healing's good. Well, can you say that again? I'm not sure I caught that. I felt hindered. Blocked. By the religious spirit, which is the Antichrist spirit that's causing me to judge you, the man of God. Uh. Well, no, I just said that, you know, in the presence of God is fullness of joy, right? Full joy. Joy is a la is laughter. Jesus said that the Father laughs from the throne. <laughs> so you probably won't like heaven because there's just a whole lot of joy. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's not enough for me. I mean, there's joy. Like we sing this song. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. Right? We sing that. Why do we do that? Because it's fun to be in joy. You know, depression's a miserable, slippery slope. I know all about it. I tried to kill myself. I was a preacher's kid. 
and I didn't feel like I could do enough right, and I just hooked myself up to the exhaust pipe. I was joyless. Even the laughing gas couldn't cause me to laugh. I was miserable. My mind was just whoosh. Jesus came, touched me, and said, I can use you now that you're broken. Will you let me be your Lord? And for the first time ever, I began, not fully, but I began to surrender. And in the surrender, I realized he started surrounding in the same proportion to my surrender. If you want all of him, you got to give him all of you. And it's not pick up your cross daily. If you really want to take this seriously, thought by thought, moment by moment, say, God, I'm yours. I am yours. I don't want to live for me. I want to live for you. God, I want to do what you say because I know you made my brain so you're better and smarter than me. And some people actually think they're smarter than God, the one who fashioned their brain. It's pride from self-reliance. We were supposed to be God-dependent, not independent from God. Yeah? The hands, the hands. Have you ever heard somebody before they eat, they say, bless the hands, like just the hands, just the rest of the body. I don't worry about that. Just let's all fill it. Just the hands. Bless my hands. Bless my hands, Lord. You know, okay, here we go. <laughs> the hands that are put to work to build my house, he said. Yeah, not a house for themselves. Those are the hands that I can use, he said. Yeah, these are the hands that will release my kingdom on earth. Amen. He wants to use your hands. Amen. Don't make an excuse that you can't be used of God because that's not your gift. Every single person can be used powerfully by the Lord because you all have the same capacity to surrender and let him surround. And when he surrounds, selflessness, sacrifice, servanthood, submission, and surrender, when you've given him all of you, now he can finally give you all of himself. And you'll carry such a breaker anointing that the enemy's going to fear you and not you fear the devil. You'll walk into structures and organizations under the anointing and you'll speak like Elijah, the word of the Lord is. And because the word came from him and not from you, he will cause the rain to stop or the rain to start, depending on what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And people will be able to suck on the dew of her mom as you gather up the people for the kingdom and for the purpose of God. Amen. People are going to come flooding into the house of the Lord. This place is going to be full. We're going to see the balcony full, people falling out in the spirit when they walk up to the building. That's what's going to happen right here. Because there ain't no party. There's a whole house party. <laughs> There's no room to be in. <laughs> Look at these guys over here. Look at the Holy Ghost. There's a Holy Ghost and habitation taking place. Whew. Hey, yeah, <laughs> they're shaking like bacon. Oh, I receive it. Oh, shut up. Okay, so, in Acts 10, <laughs> you're such a good baker, bro. In Acts 2, look at this, look at this. Go ahead, shut up. It's funny. Go ahead, shut up. This is what happens when the Holy Ghost comes in. Where's that in the Bible? Fullness of joy. Well, why are you here? <laughs> Not to talk to you. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Oh, shut up, my boss. Acts 2 4. <laughs> what church are you from? <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. Acts 2 4 says, and they were filled. Come on, somebody say they were all filled. It says right here, they were all. <laughs> they were all filled. They were all, all. Yeah, if you study the Hebrew and Greek, the extension of that word is, means just all. All of it, all of you <laughs> is filled. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Come on, somebody, say, the Spirit of the Lord is giving me utterance. I'm going to speak what the Spirit tells me to speak. I'm not going to make apologies. I'm just going to learn and grow in the gift of prophecy. I'm not going to be hung up on titles. Don't get hung up on titles. 
Some people insist, call me Apostle Bishop Joe Schnuffy. Or tell it to Sweeney. Jesus wants you not to worry so much about, are you an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher? But just bear the fruit that's worthy of repentance. Jesus is wanting just people to just function in hearing and obeying him. That's it. Hear and obey. Look here. Obey him. If you don't want to... <laughs> If you don't want to obey him, and, and if the world has told you that obedience is a bad thing, like listen, there's people wearing shirts that say obey, and they're not meaning like in a good way. They're saying obey. It's weird. Like they're trying to twist the beauty of the word that unlocks the supernatural. Make sure you've got gas in the car, but turn it on. And then let the Spirit of God say in. And then just go boom. And the Holy Ghost will kick in like a turbocharger. And you'll wonder how you smoke the rubber all the way up down the street. Because people are going, what has happened to you? Have you ever seen somebody come into a building under the anointing and just release it like that? And all of a sudden people are like, oh! Where's that in the Bible? Tell me your name so I can judge you effectively. <laughs> Bible says rightly divide the word of truth. I've seen it all. There's a lot of weird stuff. And you know, people who are under a religious spirit that think you're not supposed to be able to hear God, and they're actually preaching against hearing God and saying the only way to hear God is right here in the word. Let me tell you that you can hear God like this, but you can also hear God directly. As you are filling yeah. up on the Spirit yeah. of God, as the Spirit is in you, they say, well, yeah, but the, but the prophets, they were done away with. No. <laughs> That's funny. Well, yeah, here's the thing. Many religious people are scared to give prophetic words because if they get it wrong, they're still stuck in the Old Testament, and they think that if they get it wrong, that they could be stoned. And then they tell people if they do give words from God that they're heretics or they're in heresy. And let me just say that maybe some of you need to be let off the hook and the fear of getting it wrong is actually preventing some of you from doing anything, in which case you definitely got it wrong. If you're not actively giving prophetic words, you are missing out on the joy of seeing the result of those words released and the fruit that manifests as a result of you giving words. Mm -hmm. So speak life. The Bible says speak life. Speak life. Every time you see someone that is downcast. Man, God loves you. He sees you. He's got such a great plan for your life. Do you know Jesus? It's the goodness that will lead them to repent. And repentance is not just to do it on Sunday thing. And I know some people will do altar calls and, and they do it the wrong way. It's not meant to be done the wrong way. If you try to guilt somebody or shame somebody or fear somebody into the kingdom, you've missed it. It's the goodness that leads people to repentance. We're not to fear people. Because fear is the economy that moves hell. Faith is the economy that moves heaven. If you want to see the Lord's Prayer fulfilled, then speak life. Yeah. And let God land on those words that he chose to speak through you, his instruments of righteousness. Yeah, yeah that's a good word. <laughs> we could, you know what would be fun? Sometimes we just stay in here for hours. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you are hungry. You're like, I need to eat, boy. How much more you got for us? Um, here's the thing. <laughs> you know, can you imagine Jesus shows up in the city? Everywhere Jesus went, crowds would assemble, you know? Jesus shows up in the city, and you think people were like, hey, you know, when are we going to eat? No, they're just looking at Jesus like, this is Jesus, right? But when they did get hungry, after many hours, remember what Jesus said? Give them something to eat. What? I think the disciples were looking at him like, how are we going to give them something to eat? We don't even have any food. You give them something to eat. That's what Jesus said. You do this. And they're like, well, listen, we've seen you make something from nothing. You walked on the water. You raised the dead. You just healed every person that came to you. You turned water into wine. You're the one who does this, not us. But later in Scripture, Jesus says, now these things that I've done, you'll do. And even greater things will you do. 
I go to the Father, but wait, don't go until the power comes from on high. And at such time, then, I want you to make disciples of every nation. Teach them to obey everything I've commanded. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Freely you receive. Now freely give. My goodness. He takes the boy's lunch. Let me see what you got there, little, little man. He grabs the boy's lunch. He's just got a few fish, a few loaves, and he, he does what? He gives thanks to the Father. In the giving of thanks, the gratitude unlocked the windows and the doors of heaven. And as he lifted up the fish and the loaves from the little boy's lunch, he blessed that small amount of food that wouldn't even be enough to satisfy me. Or you, perhaps. <laughs> if you like me, and you eat a lot. Ooh, I'm losing weight, by the way. It's the glory. The glory helps you shed power. If you didn't know that, you just get in the glory. You start sweating. The fire and stress on you. I'm sweating up here. Yeah, if I had a towel, I'd be like, oh, glory to God, like some of these preachers, you know. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> He takes the boy's lunch, but it was only after he gave thanks and held it up to the Father and said, what did he say? He said a prayer, a blessing. Do you remember when the miracle happened? The miracle was prepared, prepared in the prayer as he lifted up this small lunch. But when he began to pass it out, that is when the miracle began of multiplication. And every single person, not just was eating, but was filled. And there was 12 baskets left over. Thousands filled by a little boy's lunch. That's amazing. <laughs> Imagine water and wine. I, I believe that there's greater things coming. Like, I've been drinking water from a wine glass for many years. And... I just know that there's a day coming, and maybe soon, I'll let you know. Maybe I won't, because <laughs> you're not going to believe it. But I, I, I'm going to pull this thing up like this, and I'm going to give thanks for this new wine. Oh, you saved the best for last, God. And I raise it up, and it's white. And I bring it down, and it's red. He did it once. He can do it again. I don't know what you're going through, but we serve a supernatural God. We're not meant to just go along and get along or try to fit in with the Joneses. We're not meant to compare ourselves with others. We're not just supposed to sit in the in the pasture of our of our comfort zone and just look over the fence and go. Rrr. We're supposed to be in this thing. There's cows and cougars. Cows have a hard time moving. God's saying be agile and be quick to respond and let the Holy Ghost take over every part of your life and you will be exceedingly blessed in the favor of God. Let's pray. <laughs> Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah, you can say, I receive it. I receive it. All that you have, God. All that you have. Amen. Well, we're going to do our, our tithes and offerings. And I just want to encourage you. I know some of you, you need a breakthrough. And uh, this, is, this is your moment. Whether you're sitting here right now or if you're watching online, this is your moment. If you need finances and you don't like what you have and you want God to multiply it, put it in his hands and let it change from this visible realm to supernatural increase. And we're going to give you an envelope. If, if you just receive the envelope and do whatever God asks you to do, if he gives you a certain number, just go for it. If he asks you to do something, be willing to do it before he even says it. And just remember, he wants you blessed. And this is your moment. Some of you are, are scared in the area of finance. God wants to break the poverty spirit, the lack mentality, the thinking that is not from his kingdom. There is a poverty spirit that lies and tells people that there's a shortage. There is no shortage in the kingdom of God. He doesn't need anything from us, but he gave everything to us. He gives us the power to gain wealth. He said he has riches and with no sorrow. In one moment, God can cause all grace to abound towards you in finance. So when it comes to kingdom finance, he will multiply what you give him, but he cannot multiply what you do not give him. If you want more, you got to just release more. And I know in the Bible that there's a lot of people who say, well, he did away with the, 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 the giving of the tithe. Well, if you want to argue that point, then take it in perspective. In the Old Covenant in Malachi, it says, bring the whole tithe, not part of it, into the storehouse that there be food in my house. In the New Covenant, it was, it was not just the tithe. It was 100% commitment. But some of you are robbing God and asking him to bless you for it. And I want to encourage you to knock that off. If you really want to flow in kingdom wealth and finance and be trusted, you must pass the money test. Because if you don't, you will lose. But if you do, you will gain such momentum with kingdom finance. If you want to be a funder of revival in the land, just say, yes, God. There's only a couple. I only heard a few yeses. If you want to fund revival and awakening in the land, say, yes, God. Do you know in one moment, God can change your whole circumstance. The Lord told me, he said, Nathan, you'll reap what you sow. Do you know what that means? He said, the same type of substance you release, I will, re I will increase and multiply and press down and cause the spill over. I'm like, really? He, he goes, yeah, so if you give away watches like you like to do, I'm going to give you watches. So I started giving away watches. I don't even actually like to wear watches, but yet hundreds of them have come to me over the years. As I released watches, I reaped what? The same type of thing that I released came back. Some of you don't know this, but in the Bible, God had a solution to cover your tax bill. Go catch a fish, and the first fish you catch, take the coin from its mouth and pay the taxes. That's supernatural. Is there any fishermen in here? Yeah. Any fisher of men? Yeah, come on. I want to be a fisher of men, a better fisher of men. And uh, you know, so God said, hey, what do you have? Well, the woman, she just had a little bit of paste, a little bit of dough, and, and a little bit of oil. And he said, what do you have? And, you know, she, she wanted to say, well, I'm poor. I only have this little bit. But that wasn't the point. It was, what do you have? And then she said, this is all I have. And he said, perfect. Let me see it. And then he did what he did. And he multiplied. And so many were fed. And this is how God is. And some of you, you believe and you have faith in one moment. But then you waver and you doubt. And the enemy steals your blessing. Do not eat your seed. Sow your seed. Some of you have been just pulling out your bag of seed. And you're like, oh yeah, I think I should do this and that and the other thing. And God's over here going, no, 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 I asked you to do that. Before you do anything, you give your first fruits, your first part of that check came $1,000, 100% $1, of it's still mine. I'm just asking for the first portion so I can bless the 90. But if you really want real increase, learn to give offerings. Because offering is only beyond the tithe. The tithe was the minimum requirement, and some of you aren't even doing that. I know that. Some of the same people who aren't tithing are asking the church for money. It ought not be. The church wants to help everyone, but we have to choose who we're going to help. We ask God, who do you want to help? And if you're in need of assistance, we want to know. Don't be scared to ask. Come to us and say, hey, I need a little help. And we'll do what we can. But I want you to know that if you're not, 
bringing the whole tithe into the storehouse. You're violating the scripture and you're robbing yourself by robbing God. If you really want abundance, do more than the minimum. Ask God to bless you in such a way that you can do 20 or 30 or whatever the number is you have faith for. But don't do the bare minimum and ask God, oh God, can you bless me? Well, I tithed this week, but not that last week. And so now I've only given 10, 5%, but God, please bless me for my rebellion. Instead, look at everything that you have as belonging to the Lord. Because if you don't, money will be your God. And idolatry is why the, the Lord sent the prophet. And, and he said, it's not going to rain. And guess what? It stopped raining. And they needed the rain. Is if you put seed in the ground, but there's no rain, then that does not grow. And if you don't put seed in the ground, even if God sent the rain, you can't grow anything. Because there's nothing in the ground. So put something in the in the ground with your faith and believe God for miraculous miracle money and you'll start finding it. I mean, I saw one of our friends in this church. He's like, I'm going to be faithful. I don't care what happens. If I, if, if I can't even pay the bills, I don't care. I'm giving what God says. And he started committing to the tithe, which actually pre prevents your things from breaking because if you don't give it to God, he doesn't rebuke the devourer. And if he doesn't rebuke the devourer, the devourer gets access to devour what you have. And sometimes the enemy tricks us into medicating and, and we're spending money and all the wrong stuff. And God's saying, knock it off. Give me the first portion so I can bless the remainder. Because it's be better to be blessed. It's better to be blessed on 100. Or 90. Cursed on 100. Some people say, but yeah, Jesus broke the curse. But only if you participate. That's when he breaks the curse. So who wants to see increase of wealth for the kingdom to flow into your account? Let me pray for you before you come and sow your seed. I want to pray for breakthrough in the area of finances. Just so you know, we're doing great. We're looking at buying a building. We're not asking for money because we need money. We're asking for you to do what God says because you need that. Not because we need some. We're not needy at all. We don't need to do any of this that we do. We're doing this because we want to live for God. We want to obey God. We want to do what he's asking. So if that's your heart too, just raise up your hand and just receive this blessing. Lord, I thank you right now for supernatural abundance in finance that we decide now what we're going to do then. Not just today, but every single day. Lord, every time we get a check, we know it's all yours. Not 10%, 100%. How much of what is yours in the new covenant? God, do you want us to give back? And that, Lord, as we sow our seed, as we cast our bread upon the water, Lord, we thank you that you will cause that bread to swell and to increase. I pray for miracle finances right now to come upon every person who hears this message. Miracle finances to come and to pour out. Lord, thank you for honoring the faithfulness of your people. Lord, conquer the spirit of fear that tries to bring us into lack. Lord, rebuke the devourer on behalf of the saints that are faithful to do what you've asked. Lord, we confess with our mouth that everything we have belongs to you who gave it to us, even though we've worked to receive. We say what we have done is nothing compared to what you've done for us. You gave us your best in your son. And we ask God that there'd be such a grace in this house for faith in the area of finance, that we will never, ever lack again. That we walk in increase and abundance and the overflow. We're not going to be in false humility and say, oh yeah, but God said, blessed are the poor in spirit. No, that means humility, not that you're supposed to be broke. The only thing that causes poverty and lack is withholding. And so God, we say, have our hearts today. Take what we bring. Like the boys' lunch, as we lift it up, and we ask you to multiply it, increase it, let all grace abound, open up storehouses and windows and doors in heaven, and cause there to be such an increase that it cannot be contained, now and forevermore. This is our prayer, in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Whenever you're ready, you can come to the altar. If you need an envelope, wave your hand. Somebody will bring you an envelope. If you need a pen, I just ask for a pen. The offertors are right here, ready to go. You can come and sow your seed. God bless you. Guys, what if you need an offering, uh, you can yes. go right.
right now to the website. It's the Rock RevivalCenter.com. And sow your best seed. God will bless you for it. Thank you, by the way, for watching the post. Thank you for sharing in this harvest with us. And get ready because God's increase is now.
www.ebrahamcoffee.com. You can sow seed, you can become a monthly partner. And let me send you all three of my latest books. It's a trilogy. It's not meant to be a secret for us to the plug it's heaven. And the new book that we just released is called One. And it's why God commands a blessing on unity. So God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you soon.